I don't know. I think I'm going to attain my greeting today. Hey. Hey. You there. I see you over there. I want you to come here. What's up? It's Parker. Back with another video. My boy made, made me that beat. Miss Sam. Oh, here comes the dog. <laughs> here comes Prince. He hears a lot of noise and he's like, what's up? Yo, so today I just wanted to cover a new movie that is coming out. We don't know when, but it's, it's official. Jamie Foxx is going to play Mike Tyson in the Mike Tyson biopic. Biopic? Biopic? Biography film? I don't know. I think it's pronounced a biopic. But other people say biopic, so I don't know. How do you pronounce it? TMZ released new photos of Jamie Foxx getting all big and buff for this new role that he's going to be in. He said he's trying to get up to like 230 pounds, which, you know, that's a lot of muscle and meat like when Will Smith did it for Ali. Yeah, just, ooh, yeah. <laughs> now, this movie can go really, really well. But like, what's love got to do with it and Ray, or it can go really wrong, like Green Book. Yeah. Jamie Foxx is an incredibly talented actor. He really killed his part in Ray, playing a blind man. You know, we didn't see his eyes. He just acted with his body, with his voice, his body language, and he was incredible. Everybody in that movie was incredible. The woman who played his mother, all right. Now, in the movie Ray, Jamie Foxx won the Academy Award for Best Actor in a motion picture, deservedly so. With that being said, he's about to play Mike Tyson. Now, there is an interview from 2018 where he was just describing the first part of the movie. And in that description, he gives this his impression of Mike Tyson. The doors open magically camera snakes in and we see in the distance a hulking figure holding focus mitts and a little kid hitting the mitts and you hear the kid asking the hulking figure my dad said you were amazing my dad said you was one of the best you was boss you was this you was that and you hear the person's voice don't worry about what your dad said just throw the right make sure you keep your left though get your head knocked off and as the camera gets closer you see that it's now Mike Tyson no, but my dad says, I'm going to tell you one time, don't, don't say anything about your dad. I don't care. That was, that was back in the day. Just throw the left. And when you shoot the right, shoot it with some, shoot it with authority. Shoot like you mean it. And he throws the right and he hits Mike. And Mike acts like he's falling in super slow motion. Ah. And when he hits the ground, ding, ding, ding. He's back at the last fight. He got knocked, knocked out. out. And he's, in, and he, yeah, he's there. And as you see him, the last fight. The voice is going to be perfect. I mean, he's got the imitation of Mike Tyson down to a T. Now, with that in mind, the story that Mike Tyson has, his life story thus far, has been pretty movie-worthy, okay? At the age of 20, he was the youngest heavyweight champion of the world ever. He was the youngest person to ever hold that title. Uh, he also, throughout the his career and life, has had some pretty tumultuous relationships. He's been convicted of rape, been gone to jail for this. And of course, that very, very eventful time where he bit off Evander Holyfield's ear in their rematch in 1997. So this is gonna be a movie for the gods. You know what I'm saying? This is that movie that you're going to be looking out for because it's got so much to look for. I mean, you, there's so much to expect. And with it being Jamie Foxx, th this is going to be a this is going to be a great movie. Like it could be it's going to be great regardless of if it's good or not. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be one of those movies that you just love 
because, I mean, well, maybe not. Whatever happens, you know, as far as the production, the story, the budget, everything that they're going to be doing, he's got a lot to, to live up to. You know, this is, you don't want to mess this story up because it's kind of art. Like, you want to you wanna do it right. You want to do it justice. And so, hopefully he will. Well, this has inspired me to just share some other really cool biopics that I love that are, um, you know, black biopics that I think everybody has probably seen and can appreciate it's for the culture. All right, stuff for the culture, yes. It's for us, all right. The first one that I came to mind, now this is not in any order, these are just some movies that I really like. The Jacksons, An American Dream. Now, this movie right here, keep in mind it was, I'm sorry, Prince is discovering things over here. Okay, The Jacksons and American Dream. This chronicled the Jackson Five from when they were <laughs> starting out in the industry, auditioning for Barry Gordy, and all the way up until, until till their superstardom taking over the world as pop icons and it was phenomenal you know we had Angela Bassett as Katherine Jackson holding it down as young Katie you know back in the day we saw the the true story and her being pregnant all throughout the movie pretty much she kept she was pregnant almost the whole few Things. Now, y'all, this was back when VH1 would create real scripted films, okay? And they were actually very good. You know, this was a great, great movie. We watched it over the course of three nights, and it was great. You know, maybe three or four nights, I can't remember. But it was long, so you couldn't just sit and watch it at the theater, because it was a lot to tell, and they put they did a great job. Jason Weaver, kept the star as young Michael, just freaking great, and he can sing for real. So y'all know he voiced Simba. He sang the songs for Simba on the original Lion King movie. He wasn't the voice of the talking Simba, just the singing Simba, the one with the soul. The other one was Jonathan Taylor Thomas. No, no hate to him, but he wasn't singing them songs. <laughs> the next movie that I really loved was Why Do Fools Fall in Love with Halle Berry, Lorenz Tay, Layla Rashad, Vivica A. Fox. Boy, that movie. Now, granted, it was a little soapy, salacious, you know, kind of a little campy. It had its moments, but it was good, man. It made you, it, it gave you the story in an entertaining way. It was a much different way than what most of the other ones are just pretty dramatic. This had a little, a nice light humor to it. Although it dealt with some very dark topics um, ranging from heavy drug use, addiction, and, you know, toxic relationships, um, marriage fraud. Lots of things, <laughs> you know, happen. However, it was a really cool story, and it, you learned about Zola, uh, Zola Taylor and the uh, Frankie Lyman's and the teenagers. So, you know, a really, really good movie, and you know, we got to see these beautiful black actresses at the height of their career. They were gorgeous, beautiful, just wonderful, and Lorenz Tate looked still looking young. All right, all right, Lorenz Tate, ladies and gentlemen. How old is he? 50 something? No, we cannot. We cannot talk about bi black biopics if we don't talk about what's love got to do with it. With Angela Bassett, Lawrence Fishburne, Anna Mae Bullock from Not Bull, Not Bush, playing Tina Turner and Ike Turner. Oh man, this movie was heavy and important for us to know and to see the struggle, the the fight that lived within Tina Turner to stay 
in that relationship and make it through and, and, and get out of it, but make it through through her career and keep her career going and eventually, you know, fighting her way out. And she did what she had to do. And I respect that. I think you can't do nothing but respect it, though. You know, like, she, she's a survivor. I'm a survivor! She was a survivor. And she was nominated for an Academy Award, as was Lawrence Fishburne. However, neither of them won that year, which they should have. I mean, at least she should have. I mean, dang, them arms, man. Look, I don't even... Like, even if I flex, like, my guns are still not... Shit, man, damn. Anime? Dang. Angela Bassett is such an incredible actress. She was also in the Rosa Parks biopic. You know, <laughs> why does Hollywood use the same actors and actresses to play black roles in these biopics? Chadwick Boseman. Y'all know, <laughs> he's been Thurgood Marshall, Jackie Robinson, and James Brown. Jamie Foxx as Ray, and Jamie Foxx as Mike Tyson. He was also in Just Mercy, which was also a, a true story. Forrest Whitaker, Will Smith, Hollywood. There are other black actors and actresses out there that are extremely talented. They can play these parts. Give them a chance. Let them have a chance to be famous. Just like you do with other actors and actresses. It's like we get 12 good actors and actresses for the good 10 or 15 years. And then we they get older and we get another five that are added to the mix. But we don't get like a whole slew of just extremely talented actresses and actors that can play these roles. For our people. You know, look at Jennifer Hudson. She played Winnie Mandela and she's gonna play Aretha Franklin. Now, Winnie Mandela movie, that wasn't that great. So I heard. I didn't watch it. The reviews are not great. <laughs> I'm kind of curious how she's gonna do Aretha Franklin because I feel like I'm just gonna be watching Effie White <laughs> <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> Because Jennifer Hudson sings the same all the time. She's an incredible vocalist. She has a great voice. I love her singing. But she sounds the same. Now, let's not forget some other great biopics. Malcolm X. Lady Sings the Blues. <laughs> and of course, The Temptations. That was also a made-for-TV movie that went over for the course of three or four days with Leon, and that's where we got that classic line. They coming to see me. They coming to see the temptations. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. It's a great movie. It's a, that one was really good. But I, I mean, it came out when I was probably like nine or 10. Go figure. Great movie though, I remember that for sure. All of those were good movies. Lady Sings the Blues, Diana Ross was acting her ass off. She gave it to you in that movie, for sure. Black pop culture moment today. The Wiz, the movie The Wiz that was produced by Quincy Jones and Motown. Freaking great. I am not finna do this singing with y'all today. <laughs> I'm not doing this with y'all. Come on and ease on down, ease on down the road. Mm -mm, come on. <laughs> you can't win. <laughs> no, don't you bring me no bad news. No bad news. No bad news. Can you feel a brand new day? And then at the very end, you know, Lena Horn. You got to believe. You. <laughs> Poor little Diana Ross just crying, holding Toto. If, <laughs> if y'all have ever seen it, please. Please watch that movie. When she is asking, yelling for Toto, tell me y'all don't not crack up listening to her holler, Toto! Ah, Toto! She missed, that was her dog though. If it was Prince, he wouldn't have come. <laughs> he wouldn't have come because he's too big. I would not have gotten lost with that big ass dog. He 
he would not have gotten swept off in the snowstorm with me. Are y'all excited to see Jamie Foxx play Mike Tyson? Do you think this is gonna be a huge moment in his career where we all are just so fascinated with his talent and his acting ability and the fascination of this story? Or do you think it's gonna be a complete flop and that he's just gonna gain a bunch of weight and look like him and sound like him, but it'll be a caricature and we'll all laugh? instead of take it seriously. Please leave your opinion in the comments. Thank you for watching again. I'm on the road to 100 subscribers. 100 subscribers. Let's get to 90 first. Let's get to 90. Please subscribe. Please share the video if you like it. Please like, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're not subscribed, then how am I gonna make you feel better? Isn't that what you do? No, it's a prescription, not a subscription. Judge your mama. <laughs> Peace, love, bye, bye. You don't know, you don't know. Oh, oh, oh. Mm, don't you get it? I don't know what this. <sighs> I can't dance, obviously, but that's cool. I got, I can catch the beat.